Well, good afternoon, everybody. Obviously, uh, we're looking at the state of Texas and we've got quite a bit of cloud cover over the region. Of course, it's at the surface where the wind is blowing. As I, I was trying to explain yesterday, we have moisture up high, you know, 10 miles up into the atmosphere, and then we have moisture at the bottom. Uh, cold air sinking to the bottom is what came in. And so we have a, what we call a shallow cold air with the cloud deck on top of it coming up from the southwest. But the feature that's most important is this one. Uh, you can see it's kind of a circulation. That's a, an upper air low. That's going to traverse across the state and produce some precipitation across the northern half of the state. We have a slight chance of a sprinkle or two, but I wouldn't get uh, too worried about it. This will all be tomorrow when we are at the coldest of this uh, two day cold snap. Uh, here are the temperatures, uh, the highs today, probably 30 degrees difference uh, up north and about 20 degrees difference down south. And of course, uh, tomorrow with that continuing north breeze is going to be even cooler. Now, this is a, let me give you an adjustment as to what you're looking at. This is a time lapse satellite of the North Texas Panhandle, and you can see here the fire. Now, the most interesting part is that the upper winds are going this way. The surface winds are coming down, and there's the front. You see the front? And the front really spread the fire even farther south. So we had winds picking it up going that way. And as soon as the front came through right about here, you can see, okay, let's, let's go rotate all the way around. There's the sunrise, there's the cloud deck, this is the fire overnight. There's the front coming through, and it really just sort of blew the flames southward. And uh, as Don was mentioning, we're talking a million acres of uh, a fire uh, all over the panhandle. Uh, a lot of communities had uh, problems with it. Uh, Pampas, uh, Canadian, Borger, all those little towns up there were in having to evacuate because we weren't going to be able to stop this very quickly with all that wind. So here's future tracker. And as that system comes out of the southwest, notice how the rain sort of picks up uh, in the uh, uh, western portions of the state. And here we go on Wednesday. And watch this. Uh, uh, Thursday. What is that? Oh, yes, they're going to have a little dusting of snow. Uh, on top of the burned fire grass uh, throughout much of North Texas. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of interesting, isn't it? Uh, so, hey, well, at least it'll be cooler and it'll sort of dampen everything down. The light rain for us is really kind of a more of a light rain to, to a mist uh, because of the deep, deep stack of clouds. And then that's going to go away. And so after that, beginning on Thursday, we actually start warming up. Uh, for Friday and Saturday, we may get some pretty good sun and warming temperatures as we get to the weekend. So this is a two day cold snap. And that's about the extent of it. Watch these temperatures tomorrow. Only 58. Ooh, that's gonna, that's the high temperature. And we were 83 yesterday and then 68, then seven, and then the weekend. We're going to be back into the T-shirts and flip flops. And let's take a look at the big pictures. This is the storm that produced the heavy weather in the Midwest. That's pulling away. Frontal system continues dropping south. Here's our little system coming up from the southwest, producing that quick precipitation. Then a couple of quiet days. That would be your Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And then as we look in the long term, seven days out, we've got this next storm coming through the plains and this frontal system rolling down through our area. At this point in time, it does have a slight chance of a little sprinkle activity, but that's not till next Tuesday. So tomorrow, a cold day in Port Lavaca, cloudy skies, high of only 58. And then tomorrow in Cuero, cloudy, windy, with a high of only 54. 